Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Crime and Entertainment. Returning guest here, Gene Barello. Gene, how you doing, my friend? What's going on, bro? Hey, so uh, when we done our first show, um, you told me, you said this thing's probably going to get about 20, 25,000 views. All right. And I was like, well, if it does, I'll be happy. That's pretty good for my channel because I'm a smaller channel. I think right now it's got about 65 or 66. <laughs> you're, uh, you're closing in to be the top. There's only an adult film star that's got more than you right now. So you're closing really? in to be the top. Yeah. All so, right. Uh, so we're pretty good. So we'll see if we can top that with this one. What's been going on with you? Nothing much, man. Just, you know, maintaining, just waiting for this TV show to kick off. And, um, you know, uh, uh, this movie, uh, Pony, I'm waiting for everything to kick off, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I guess I want to talk a little bit about the comments. Like, I don't know if I've ever had a guy on and I've interviewed Anthony Ramundi before. And mm -hmm. I, a lot of people were in the comments with that. I don't know if I've ever had a guy more hated than you on the yeah. show. Um, <laughs> and, but it, strangely enough in today's times, that's a good, that can be a good thing. Yeah. They hate it. They're mad because I, I, I say what I want. I do what I want. They can't handle it. They suck. You know, I walk around, I, you know, I get people mad, bro. You know? Yeah. <laughs> And you've been doing the rounds, a lot of podcasts you've been on here in the last, I'd say, month or two since you come on yeah, our show. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've seen you and Anthony went to Arizona. You was with Sammy on that show? Yeah, Sammy Gavano. That was cool, man. I had a good time out there. That's the first time you'd ever met him? Yes. What was uh, what was that an encounter like? It was good. He's, you know, exactly what I thought he was. You know, he's still crazy. He's cool, though. Uh Nice guy. I got along with him well. You know, I had spoken to him many times before that, but I never met him. Right. Um, one thing I did want to address, because I know um, James Proctor put out a video yesterday or a short, and he was talking about this guy from, I'm not sure, I'm not even sure of his program, but Shooting Dice or something like that. He basically put out a video saying that you had agreed to do something with him and you no-showed. Um, I didn't know. Was he, uh, the air. Yo, know, he, he sent me a link three times. I said, bro, it's not working. And then, then all of a sudden I told him, I said, yo, the link's not working. I tried to sign on. I got the screenshot. And he goes, oh, let me try to do it again. He goes, we'll do it tomorrow. And then tomorrow he's trying to pick all these times. I'm like, bro, I did you a favor. I usually charge a lot of money to come on these things. Like, I'm doing you a favor. And, like, now he's taking advantage of it. And I was just like, bro, I got nasty with him, but I was still going to do it. And then he just got mad and went and did that thing. I guess he wanted attention anyway to get it. Yeah. Um, well, I even commented on that thing, that short with, uh, James, I said, you know, anything that me, me and Gene's ever agreed upon and worked out to, like he's always showed up. He's never, Bro. I said, we might, we may be rescheduled times, but yeah. that's just happens. You know, people have shit going on. Yeah. I mean, wait, listen, man, I've never missed a fucking show in my life. I did hundreds of them. You know what I mean? So that's bullshit. You know, it's just that he was. And then he's complaining, like, oh, I said, bro, I'm doing you a favor. I didn't want to do it. I did it for Jeff to do the favor because he knows him. Otherwise, yeah. I charge 500 a 1000 Like, you got to pay me. I don't I don't need your publicity. Like, you need mine. I don't need yours. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's the opposite. Like, I don't need to come on your fucking little podcast, you know, 10 views. I'm just doing it because, you know, you, Jeff to do said to do the favor. And then all of a sudden, you're making it like, you know, this big arrangement where you're giving me all these fucking links that ain't working and I'm getting aggravated now. And I keep on trying to click on it, but I don't know if he did it on purpose. I don't yeah, know. And, and I mean, is, is he a newer channel? I don't, I don't know the gentleman. So I have I no know. idea who he is, bro. No I idea. checked out his videos. He's got like maybe three or four that I've seen, but it didn't look like he had had, it didn't look like he had been established very long. So it could have been a technical issue. You know, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's I the know. thing in this genre. When you do something like that, it's going to spread fast and that won't do nothing, but just put a bad name on your, or bad, you know, reputation on your name as far as doing business in these circles. Yeah. He's an um, idiot. That's going to fuck him up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cause nobody's going to want to deal with that. Um, <laughs> right. I mean, you know, I, and I don't know the guy, you know, he could be a great guy. Maybe it was just a miscommunication, right. but I did want to clear the air on that. Um, <clears throat> how about, uh, you know, I know we got a lot of, uh, attention when you addressed Joey the last time, but Joey's been on some big podcasts since yeah. then, you know, Vlad, uh, camp Gagnon. Did you watch both of those? Yeah, it's just, you know, it's all hyper, it's all it's all hypocrite shit. You know, him basically going on talking, saying, let's talk about the rats, let's talk about this, but you look like a rat, and everyone's calling you a rat now, so it really doesn't matter. He don't care. Honestly, he just doesn't care anyway. Who's going to do something to him anyway? Nobody. You know, he don't yeah, that's, that's my thing is, I think where he's sitting, he's, I mean, I do think he's probably out 100% of the life, especially now. Um, even if he was, I think he's one of those guys, and I hate to say it, where guys just got mad respect for him because, you know, all the shit he's been through, he's probably, he just does what he wants. And plus, the Philadelphia Mafia is a joke, so who's really going to say something to him? You know what I mean? It's like, 
yeah. he's trying to like get, get lost. You know, these guys can't shine my shoes, you know? So what is your take on all these guys that are, are in this mob tube genre? So you have Dominic Cacali. Have you met him? Yeah, of course. I know him good. Okay. So you got Dom, you got, uh, John A. Light. Right. You got Sammy. You got Michael Francis. Where do you think he's going? He's combating all that by basically going against all these guys. Do you think that has a shelf life? I mean, what do you mean? Like it's going to get washed up? Yeah. I mean, because I see they are starting to do interviews with different people. And I've actually had Snuff um, on the show. Um, he, he talked a lot about his addiction issues. And, yeah. Uh, and it was something that I didn't really know. You don't get a chance to hear that you know, on their side of the things and they are right. starting to do interviews. But I think when you come in going at everybody's a good way to make that initial splash into the genre. But then after that, you got to do something to keep them there. Absolutely. And you know, it gets burnt out. You know what I mean? So that's why I've been trying to go into other things. You know what I mean? Cause you know, it starts getting burnt out and no one wants to listen to it. You know, it starts getting played out like anything else. Right. So, what I wanted to talk to you about is like some of these shows. Um, and have you done Michael Francis yet? Yeah, I did. He just, he, he has his film. He's waiting to edit it and put it out. Okay. Yeah. So I've done him too. Uh, March, first of March. Okay. Um, went up to Orange County where he was at. I seen your boy, Jeff up there, Jeff Crow. Okay. Yeah. I like and, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. He went on to, um, well, soft white. And yeah. then I also did Cinema Mills up there the same day. So we hung out a little bit there up there in LA. LA right. was shitty, man. I was very disappointed. Told you. Disgusting. I would take New York any day over LA, bro. Yeah. It's better than, I mean, New York's better than LA, but, but New York is disgusting too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is, but there's this, there's always something going on. Like the clubs we were in, man, like I'm, I'm seeing all these clubs that's got these infamous history behind him like the viper room that goes all the way back to <laughs> Cohen and and johnny depp and those high state card games with all them right. famous actors and they were closing at like 11 45 like Jesus, what that the whiskey a go-go was closed at yeah. like 11 30 and i'm just like damn what i thought this place was you know yeah. something, something it's, to not it. the same. it's not the same man i'm sure there were places that i just didn't know about it's my first time ever going i didn't know a ton about the city so i'm i'm sure there were spots but just those being the mainstay spots that you hear about, it was it was really surprising. You can go in New York. I mean, whatever time of night you walk out, there's something open. There's something you can go and do. Absolutely. New York, yeah, forget it. You go 3, 4 in the morning, there'll be something open. Yeah. So if you got anybody you want to address this go around, is there any, anything you wanted to get off your chest? Um, uh, there was a few things I wanted to address. Um, I definitely I, I definitely wanted to address, uh, address um, uh, Snuff because what he said in your interview when I watched it, was that he says that Joey Molino didn't start with me. No, he did. He commented and he said he's going to come after all of us. And when he said by him saying that, he's indicating me, all the guys that I deal with and hang out with, you know, all the ex-mob guys. So okay. that is starting with us. When you come out on a podcast and you're saying, I'm going after all the rats, all these guys, you're talking about me as well. And he didn't make his comments about me anything. So, you know, I understand um, stuff is nobody. You know what I'm saying? He's not a gangster. His grandpa might have been. All he was was a junkie kid that, you know, related to somebody. And now he's sitting next to Joey and thinking he's cool and tough, which that, that's that's all he's doing. He's basically coattailing Joey Molino, which is fine. I understand that. But don't come out here talking about rat this, rat that. You've never been in a fist fight in your life. you never been through nothing in your life. you never seen a jail cell. you never did nothing in your life. Okay, he's sitting next to Joey Molino. That's all you got. And that's why you're on a fucking podcast. Not because they want to hear snuff stories about selling his cars. You know what I'm saying? So, it, it, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like we want to see you, buddy. So, you know, him coming on and saying, Joey got no clue who he was. No, he opened his mouth. He knew what he was doing. Okay. And he came at us. That's why I went off on him and everything. As of right now, I could care less about that. Now, I don't even care about them, you know? So you're saying the fact that he grouped, you know, all of the informants, all of the rats, as they call them. He knows them. what he was doing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Do you think we're in a time now to where, I know back before, like, I'd say Sammy Gravano Somebody being an informant to the government that was in the mob was like the worst thing you could do. Right. Now it really does seem like normal. And it's not just, matter. it's yeah. not just, um, you know, stuck with the mob. Like you look Takashi six, nine. Yeah. Takes a lot of time. He cooperated. He's back out. As soon as he hits the streets, he goes live on Instagram. He's got, um, I forgot how many hundreds of maybe the millions of people watching his live. It's like, you know, 20, 30 years ago, nobody would have watched it. He'd have been exiled. Nobody would have well, given him a deal. Nobody would have talked to him. 
But now well, think about it. Think about it like this. So we'll get back to him. But think about this for organized crime. Think about how much the mafia was glorified, and now, and, and, and now think about this. Ready? Um, I, I was telling this. I was telling this to somebody the other day. People thought about to think about the mafia all the time. Now they have inside information where people could actually hear it and actually what goes on. Because it's always like, oh, this guy's that. He's a killer. You don't really know the stories. Now we're actually giving you details and facts about these people that people glorified about. Without us talking, you would never know about who killed who, who shot who, the actual facts, how it happened, scenarios, what the boss said. So they're getting the people, the fans are getting the inside information that Jerry Molina won't give you because why? He's he not a rat. He can't right. tell his stories like he wants to because that's the side he's playing. We could say whatever we want. Kill this guy, shot this guy, rob him, how he did it. They're giving, when Jerry Molino's giving you a story, it's like, I don't know what you talk about. I didn't do that. I don't know who did this. So even though people are interested of that, interested in that, they're more interested with us because we're actually giving the stuff that they want to know. You know what I mean? The rank, who's so and so. You know, people DM me, yo, you know about this guy, you know about that guy. You know what I mean? So I think that's why. So many people are, are loving this stuff now, you know, with us and why they're interviewing us and why we're so popular is because now people get the inside scoop on organized crime that they can never have. You know that's, what I mean? That's 100 percent accurate, because I've told yeah. this to people because there's been people that I think have questioned me is like, you know, why would you platform performance? And I'm like, who else are you going to talk to? Like, who else are you really going to get information from about this? Nobody. And like people say, well, Joey's under. Yeah, but Joey is very, very vague. He talks about stuff that is, he can't. you know, they'll still indict him. They'll still, yeah, they'll they'll, indict yeah, him. He they says the wrong thing. They'll jail. fucking indict him. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's him. smart. Don't get me wrong. He's smart. I'm not doing it. When he, when he went on Vlad TV, every FBI agent was watching that fucking thing and prosecutor. They were oh, you believe hoping it. he slipped up and said something where they could tie it into something, you know, unsolved yeah. murders and so, things so like that. You know? that he <laughs> talked about his stuff, like obviously him and his, his friend that got shot, like he can talk about that. That's public knowledge. He was there. Right. But he can say he don't have a clue who did it. You know, of course he's sure. gonna. Yeah, I'm everybody sure knows he did. did it. You know, what right? I'm saying? Yeah, but that's where he's limited. Um, now people are gonna hail him because he's he's never cooperated, and that's fine. That's commendable. Um, right. you know, I can't, I can't, you can't knock a man for never cooperating. You can't. Right. Um, but at the same time, the flip side of that is people, I think, have had this fascination and this love with the mafia. You going back from The Godfather to Goodfellas to Casino to The Sopranos, it has took Hollywood and, and television by storm of people wanting to know more. And then when you guys have now come out and started these shows, it does, like you said, it gives people the insider information to let you know about this guy, how this guy was that right. people would never, ever get to know. And they would, ne they would never know. And that's the whole thing. Cause now we give you the inside information of coming from the horse's mouth. You know what I mean? That, you know, they can never get without us. So, like I said, that's why people are so fascinated with it because people are fascinated with organized crime. They always just read about it and seen it and always heard the stuff. Now where the inside guy is telling you the information where, you know, people are loving it, you know? The, the Godfather is often referred to as one of the greatest movies of all time, if not the greatest. Yeah, not my, not my opinion, but yeah. I actually, I mean, it's like, it's one of the movies that you have to be in a mood to watch. Like, I think Goodfellas, to me, is a better film to watch than The Godfather. All-time greatest mafia movies, Goodfellas. It's based on Queens, Ozone Park, right. Howard, the whole neighborhood, all the guys. Everything's real, names, people. It's the best, closest. It's the realest thing you're going to get. That and Donnie Brasco are the two realest movies. Yeah. Um, and I think, and that's kind of what I wanted to, to talk about with some of the movies and how they compared. I think Godfather definitely has its place. It let people know somewhat of the structure of the mob, you know, or, you know, the hierarchy. And it was a great story. Obviously, it had three sequels, Um, you know, it, or two sequels. And it was really good, but I think Goodfellas is that one that people has compared it to. Do you think that's the closest film out of anything that's ever been made to real life? Yes. Was there anything in that film that was a stretch or that yes. was what? What do you think? Um, how, like a lot, like how the people died. Um, uh, for instance, um, um, who's murdered that, that didn't happen. Frankie Carbone, that wasn't in a freezer. That's fake. Okay. Um, uh, that's the one they put in the meat truck at the end of the movie. Yeah, that's that's fake. Uh, that never happened. He was killed, but not like that. They just, right. you know, did that for the movie. Um, there was a few scenes in it that were bullshit. Uh, Tommy D. Simone, obviously, he was really tall and skinny. He wasn't short and fat like Tom, right. um, him. Their last names were a little different. That's all. Burke was uh, Conroy was really Burke. Right. Um. Uh. Paulie Cicero was really Vario. Yeah. Um. 
you know, there's a few things changed like that, but for the most part, um, uh, it was pretty accurate. But there was some scenes where they exaggerated and added their own stuff into it. You know, the biggest thing that I've ever heard like come out about that movie that didn't fit was how really connected and up the ladder Henry Hill was. Have you heard anything about like? Uh, yeah, but he was up? with them. He was yeah. with them. He wasn't in the Latanza heist, but he knew about it. You know what I'm saying? And he's lucky he wasn't in it because they would have killed him too. They didn't want to pay anybody. Right. That you was know? my whole thing is if they'd done that and they're starting to kill everybody, if you were in that and you had anything anything yeah. to do with it, you're going to go right. You're going to be a domino that falls. The only one that wasn't dying on that heist was Vinny Astaro, my boss, uh, Jimmy Burke, uh, Tommy D, and the rest of them were all getting clipped off. You know, they killed like six, seven of them. <laughs> Did he ever tell you anything about that heist? Did he ever of mention course. bring it up? Yeah, of course. He got eight hundred thousand out of it. He got eight hundred thousand out of it and blew it in the track. <laughs> like Sick, it, right? it, it's funny because like that heist was so good, it was so perfect. Like I no, I don't even know. I'm sure they had weapons, but nobody got hurt. It was essentially the perfect crime, but because of that, it brought so much fucking heat that it was really kind of the downfall, I believe, in my opinion, of Jimmy mm -hmm. Burke and that whole crew. Well, and it wasn't supposed to be six million. It's supposed to only be one million. They just got lucky. It's supposed wow. to be a one million dollar score. Turned out to be six million. Six point something million. So when you did you is that a movie you watched growing up? Yeah, of course. Did you did you know anybody that that was made? Obviously, like you said, some of the names that they were, you know, yeah, changed. My, well, well, someone played as my uncle in it. Mo Black's brother, Fat Andy. Remember? Uh, oh yeah, 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 yep, yep. Louis yep. Louis, 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 Louis played Louis. my uncle. Louis Apolito plays my uncle. He's actually a hitman for the fucking Right. Mom. I was about to say, he wound up later on being actually yeah. arrested as a hitman Anthony, for uh, Vicking them guys, right? Anthony Stabile's son. Anthony Stabile, his son was my friend. He's dead. Anthony Stabile's son died, died of drugs. Um, who else is in there? A bunch of guys. You know, we know all the family members and stuff like that. It was a neighborhood movie, you know? Yeah. Um, and then they even mentioned uh, uh, Mike Francis. In the, in the movie, they call him Mikey Franchese. Right. And I think a lot of people call him that, but that's not his name, right? You say Francis. it, Francis, right? Okay. Yeah, it's Francis, okay. yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of people refer to him as Franchese, but I mean, like you said, the movie changed a lot of names. Yes. In there, it took a lot of liberties. Um, Donnie Brasco was another good one, man. I mean, like, I think that's very underrated. It doesn't get mentioned enough with the, the other mob movies because Al Pacino acted his ass off in that. Donnie Brasco, I mean, uh, Johnny Depp did well. I love Michael Madison, that movie. What do you think of that? Great. Yeah, Michael Madison did great. Um, I like him as an actor. Uh, played Sonny Blackwood. That had a lot of exaggerations in it, too. Uh, they never killed the guy, Nicky. Remember when, remember when Al, uh, Al Pacino shot the guy in the head, his own friend? Right. That At never the, um, but, the, yeah. but the three bosses did get killed. Yes, that's real. That Actually, they didn't find those bodies until, two, until Joe Messino cooperated. Right. He, he cooperated, and they found him after that. Wasn't a guy from uh, New England tied into that, or was it? It was a Canada. guy from Canada, Canada, Canada. Yeah, because yeah. there's there's Rizzuto. a show. Uh, you're Rizzuto, Rizzuto, that's Rizzuto. right. There's a show called Bad Blood. Did you ever watch Bad Blood? No. Nah. So the first season is 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 good. Um, this guy I can't remember his name, but he's in a lot of movies. Um, and then Kim Coates, who was in Sons of Anarchy. I don't know if you watched that. He played Tig. He was kind of like the the henchman there, and it's centered around the Rizzutos from Canada. Now the second season, yeah. forget it. It was just totally fabricated but it was a good one and it talked about him right. being indicted for that murder um right when these movies come out what is the vibe in the street at the time because how old are you when donnie brasco dropped young uh 15 and now are people watching these talking about hey i knew this guy that guy what's the, well what's yeah the but but remember the bodies weren't found yet when that movie came out sonny red and them were never found okay yet. well okay yeah right so i guess maybe Those bodies weren't found until 2005 so what about just some of the guys? Because even in that movie, they make yeah. it seem like Lefty goes and gets killed when actually Lefty went to jail. Sonny Black Sonny, was the one that got killed. Sonny goes and gets killed. Well, Lefty was going to get killed, too. He just went to jail. He was dead. Right. They were all going to die. Um, and uh, uh, also, what also never happened is that Donnie Brasco never chopped up bodies, obviously, because right. they would have known where the bodies were. They didn't know. That's, right. That was edited. And he didn't do a lot of stuff that they said because – uh, you can't do that. You know, you can't have an FBI agent chopping up a fucking body. You know what I'm right. <laughs> do you believe that he was about to get made? No. Nah. Bullshit. You don't think he was ever close? Bullshit. Because the guy that they supposedly go kill, uh, uh, Anthony and Delicato. Uh, he don't Burnham. get killed. Yeah, he, he don't never, get killed. He, well, he didn't get now. killed in the movie either. They arrested him right before they were going to shoot him. 
But that no, he got shot in his head. He was shot before in the head. Oh, in real life, you're talking. Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about in the movie. That's how they wound it up when Al and uh, Johnny were going to kill him. Right. That was what that's was supposed fake. to get him his button. And yeah, then, that's fake. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so looking back at that, like, I guess next you would have Sopranos, which is largely kind of labeled the best TV show of all time. For my money, it is. That is in the day where you're probably a little bit more active in the street. Yeah. Are people watching that? Are you guys watching that? Yeah. I mean, it was decent. I wasn't really a fan of it because it was Jersey guys. You know, we don't really care. You know what I'm saying? But right. other than that, it was good acting and everything like that. But it's a Jersey family. So they really weren't doing the things they were showing on that show. You know what I mean? Now, you know, Tony Sirico was a, a New York guy. He was with the Columbos for a piece. That was a yeah, guy. He was a real gangster. Oh, That's what yeah, made he, the show. He was a real gangster. He was a suspect in the murders. Oh, yeah. 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 Bone shark, tough guy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Really, really. Uh, t- he had a big rap sheet. Um, matter of fact, I'm supposed to be getting with Scott to do a show, uh, Scott Bernstein, about some of the stuff that Paulie was into. He actually got questioned about a murder after the show come out. I know. Somebody, yeah, somebody recognized him. What do you know about that? You know anything about that? Listen, that guy was in the street, bro. He was with the Columbos. He was, heavy, he was a tough guy. He's a known loan shark, beating guys up, him and his brother. That's a known thing. Yeah, and I don't remember the specifics, so I don't want to butcher the story, but it was basically this woman that had some tapes that had a lot of dirt on people, and he went to get the tapes. Um, The house, uh, I think, got burnt down. The woman did get shot. Someone seen somebody leaving, I think is how the story goes. Don't quote me on that. I could be wrong, but I know that he was questioned after Sopranos' first season come on the air. Somebody, I think, recognized him. He was called in to question about it, and basically he didn't say shit, and it just kind of you know, went on without really being right. talked about. Um, that was actually the first place I had heard it. But yeah, he was he was in the street, man. He was a tough guy. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think that things that went on in that show would never happen in real life? Where, where some I of mean, the, the way they were all situated, the way the whole thing, the murders were happening, too many murders in it. Um, just a lot of stuff that definitely was not going on. The way they had the unions and the way they were, a lot of shit was just completely bogus. Jersey wasn't running shit like that. They were answering to the five families and they weren't big. They were a very small family. And uh, don't get me wrong, they had their killers and everything, but it was not. The show made it look like the New York Mafia. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It was basically, it basically looked like the New York Mafia in the eighties. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. In the, yeah, that's what that's how they operated New York. Right. Well, you know, a guy that was from the Decavs, um, it kind of come out today, and I don't know if you've seen this, but obviously, you know, re- OJ passed away uh, yeah. Thursday, and there was a guy named Joey Apolito. Have you ever heard that name? Yes. So Joey Apolito, I think from what I was researching, was a, a New Jersey guy. He was with the Decavs. He may have had some ties into the other families, um, was a known drug trafficker. But I interviewed a guy today named Chris Todd, and he seemed to think that Joey had a hand in the murder of Nicole and Ron. Or excuse me, of uh, yeah, Nicole and uh, Ron Gold. Never know. Who knows? I don't think OJ did it himself. I said I think he had it done. Right. That's this- what I believe. Yeah, this is going to be a, a pretty interesting show when we finally drop it. But I've always often thought that I think he he either had it done or he knew who did it. For a while, right. I thought it was his son. Well, it, well, they thought it was that serial killer guy, too. If you remember watching that, the guy that was uh, raping and killing women, burned him in the cause. They actually the guy's brother actually says, my brother killed Nicole and o, uh, Nicole and the guy OJ hired him. Okay. That's what the brother claims. It was, all over t- it was all over TV for a while. I thought that the DNA matching could have possibly been for his for his son his son shows up the mom's with this guy who knows what was going on if he flips out kills the guy the, the mom gets it to oj shows up and he's like you know what i'll fight this i can handle it tells the son to take off and yeah. what happens I mean, that, that sounds good i just think oj hides somebody to kill them he yeah. just couldn't handle it you know what i'm saying some people are crazy like that i just think he hides somebody to kill them truthfully now the one thing i'll say about sopranos is these guys they kill these people and then it's like the way they dispose of the bodies. When you guys were in the street and you guys had to hide bodies, what were y'all doing? <laughs> First, <laughs> that's it's movie stuff. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you know, you know, you you know, it, you got to take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, you have to. It's movie stuff. They can do whatever they want. The way they're just having shootouts in the fucking woods, and you know the way they're doing things. It's just you know, it, it's movie stuff. You know what I mean? So some people, I'm sure you guys wanted to be found to send a message. That you're told what to do when you're doing work like that. They tell you how to do it, how they okay. want it done. All right, so let's get into that. What would you, you got? Black. They, want, they wanted Sonny Black to be found with his hands chopped off because they wanted to send the message. He shook the hands of an agent. Look, right. 
Did That's you ever why. get a message similar to that? Oh, I mean, would be yeah, absolutely, yeah. We just beat him on your site. Yeah, I mean, I spent, I had to give a guy a message one time. You know, you ever disrespect our people again? We'll fucking kill you. That's coming straight from Vinny. If I beat him with a belly club, I was supposed to kill him originally, and it got changed. Thank God the guy was a janitor; would be dead. Yeah, I think we covered that in the yeah last episode. I had a bunch of there's a bunch of things they uh uh they they're very specific on uh specific, I can't say that fucking word you know <laughs> I murder it yeah uh very specific or the fuck it is um <laughs> on how they want things done you know what I mean so if they tell you this is how they want it done that's the way it has to be done that's how they want it they want his dick chopped off in his mouth left in the street chop his fucking dick off put it in his mouth leave him in the street you know what I'm saying. So if they had to dispose of something so it wouldn't be found, what would let's just take this one for instance. The guy that hit um John's kid. Uh yeah. what was his acid. name? What was acid? He's an acid. Yeah. They put him in acid. So that would would that be one of the go to ways to do that where they wouldn't get found? Bury in the woods. It's the easiest way. They put you in the woods, someone's property, six five feet under, you'd never be found. They were burying guys in the bocce courts. Really? Yeah. Right so at the that, social club. So that part kind of does lend itself because there was pieces of Sopranos where they had a, a guy that had a farm upstate and they would take guys up there and bury them. And then when the guy got old and decided to sell the farm, they had to go back up there, him and Steve Buscemi and Vinny, Christopher. And Vinny and was Dick doing Mark. that. Vinny Asato was doing it. He had to move his bodies. Yeah, he was buried under a house. He had to go move it. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. So you, can you... What what happened with the house? Did somebody just buy it? Somebody moved? It was Jimmy, Bur- it was Jimmy Burke's daughters. So him and Jimmy Burke killed a guy and buried him under the house. And they had to go move know. it. And she, uh, didn't, she didn't know? I, she probably did. Who knows? But they had to move it. You know? Why did they have to move it? Was she selling? I, I think, yeah, something was going on where they had to move it. He had his son move it. And then they found a piece of the bone still. They knew that he was really there. They charged him with the murder in 2014. Did you ever have to move a body? Um, I was supposed to uh, move one for him in the middle of the night. He told me to call me up and he says he needed me to do some. And then I went to the house and he told me exact words, um, whatever you see or whatever you do, he goes, you never talk about it again or you'd be labeled a rat. And he goes, I need you to move something. I already knew what he was doing. He had bodies all over the place. I knew what he was doing, what I had to do. It was three in the morning, He's 79 years old. He wants me to go move something in the fucking middle. I thought I was getting killed, to be honest with you. And then fucking, <laughs> I, I'm always doing something wrong. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, you know, am I, am I going to fucking kill right now? But uh, anyway, he called it off. It, it, it turned out that he didn't have to move it, but it was a corpse. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, because, I mean, that's always the thing when you see him do it. Like, for instance, there was that, uh, that scene when the guy, Ralphie, killed that stripper. And it's like you just never heard anything else about her after that. It's like somebody would report this girl missing. Somebody Bro. would be coming and looking for her. You- oh, forget it. They start, yeah, they put posters on walls, uh, on poles, all kind of shit. You know, people go missing, you know? Especially when they know it's organized crime related, they're on it. Right. Is strip clubs a big business in organized crime? It was. It was huge. Yeah. So you don't think that's still a part of it? It is, but it was like so big in the, like back in the day. Is the biggest All reason it was. is the biggest reason to wash cash? Yeah, and because of sex, selling selling women, sex, right. you know, prostitution rings is big money. It's all cash. You know what I mean? Well, that too, and like, just say if you're making money, for, well, from that or, or drugs or whatever the case may be, when those types of businesses, this is pretty much a cash business. You can inflate your actual income, and then right. you pay taxes on that money. Then it's washed at the end of the year. Right. You know, the club may not make, but you know, 5,000 in a week, but you're going to say it made 15,000 and you of do that course. for a whole year. Then you, you washed, you know, a couple of hundred grand, you know, depending yeah. on, you know, the size of the club. Did you know anybody that owned or had a piece of strip clubs around there? Uh, you fuck yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everyone. Some of the guys. Uh, fucking, uh, Frankie Pasco, my friend, uh, my friend's father owned two of them. VIPs and lanes. Al Trucchio had clubs. Everybody had a piece of them. Ronnie one arm, uh, all of them. Queens places everywhere. Everybody had a piece of that. Every, every strip club that was in the 90s had to be protected by a guy. So they were all with wise guys. So that's what I was trying to get to. So if a regular guy opens one up, he's got really no choice but to work with somebody. They're going to the- want to. Yeah, they're going to want the protection. They're going to want it. So they're going to look for it. You know what I mean? Back in that day, at least. 80s and 90s, yeah, you had to be. Right. I'd say one of the bigger, more stories about that is what um, Mikey Scars was involved in with the guy from Scores. I actually know that. I met that guy before, yeah. 
Really? I, I listened to his book. It was actually you know, he's, free. He's, he's gay. Yeah. 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 Which, is, which is odd, but I actually interviewed a guy that owns one of the biggest gay... It's not a strip club. It's just a nightclub. It's called the Ritz. You know, you know he was charged with with, pedi- with a bad charge. Tommy Greco? Scores guy? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'm thinking... I'm talking about somebody different. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I'm talking about a guy. He, it's not a strip club. It's an actual. It's a gay nightclub. No, I'm talking about the guy you were talking about from. Scores. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was his name? You remember his name? I forgot it, but I I had met him a few times with with, with somebody, and uh, I didn't know he had a sex case. You know. Oh, so he had a sex case coming out. So Mikey Scars got um got into that club. Is the money in there? Like, I mean, is it? Did they guys drop a ton of money in those places? Yes. Yes. How much money have you dropped in one of those places? Before? Tons. You, you, I know people go in there thousands and thousands of dollars. Oh, I used to go to the Hustler Club all the time. You spend thousands in there. That's downtown or that's about a Hudson, in right? City. Yeah, yeah, it's real nice. Yeah. What was the biggest one back in your day? Hustler Club. That was still the biggest one? Oh, it was nice in there, yeah. In Manhattan, absolutely. When scores got shut down, did it? I mean, it was still open, right? It might be still open now, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's just ownerships just change. It's changes ownerships. That's all. Yeah, exactly. When did all of that get pushed out? Like, when did the mob not be able early. to have control? They still got it, but it was started getting washed up in the early two thousands. That's like I told you, my era was the last era. That's when it all started getting like everything just getting, you know, not the same. The fear was just getting drained away. You know, it was like, you know, it was, it just got dead, it got washed up. Mm-hmm. So, do you, do you think people still have a piece of those clubs now? Absolutely. Really? You think to this day people still have a piece of Absolutely. Guys? Yes, absolutely. Because the guy I was mentioned earlier, his name is Tommy Greco. And there's a there's a club in Manhattan. I think it's right there near Times Square. It's okay. called the Ritz. He's a straight guy. And I mean, <laughs> I thought we were doing the interview. I just assumed he ran this huge club that he was himself was going to be gay. And then, right. like, so I didn't know him beforehand. We didn't have a pre-conversation. We just kind of winged the interview. And then in the middle of it, he's talking about, yeah, my wife, my kid. And I'm like, and he's like, yeah, I'm straight. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he's like, yeah, I, f- I say it like this. Every straight guy should own a gay club and every gay guy should own like a strip club. <laughs> and he's, he said that keeps the temptation down to do anything. Like yeah. you don't have to worry about you getting involved with the workers. It's kind of an even playing field as far as dealing with the people and the, and the customer, I mean, I guess he's right to a certain extent, but right. apparently, like Mary J. Blige has went to this club. Conor McGregor has went to this place. I'm sure. Yeah. Madonna has shot videos in here. I guess it's a really well-known place. It's not, right. obviously you have that element, but you know, there's, there's other people to go there too. And believe it or not, that's not the only thing that the mob even had their hands in gay clubs. Even Carlo Gambino had sexual homosexual clubs back in the day. No, they had their the hands in worse things than that. You yeah. Know? Really? Oh, worse than that. oh yeah. Gotti Gotti was taking money from fucking kitty porn. Really? Yeah. Uh see, I got I got a hard time with that, man. Roy DeMeo too. Roy DeMeo was the king of it. He was videoing it. Yeah. We interviewed a guy on our Johnny and Gene show that he actually told us what they were doing to him when he was young. Wow, really? We had it on our show. Fuck. I have to go back and check that out. I I, yeah. I just like I draw the line when it comes to kid shit, man. Cause I actually just had the guy on the interview is not out yet. Um, I hope to drop it this week, which by the time this comes out, it might already be out, but it's a guy that, um, he pretty much, he's done like 30 years in prison, but that was all he did is smash like child molesters. Yeah, and he's too. the guy we that got too. a hold of, uh, Jared yeah. Fogel in prison. Okay. Yeah. We all, we all, uh, um, we all go after him. That's the fun time. So let me ask you this. He told me this, the guards would sometimes tip you guys off. Yes, depending. Some guards are not with it because it's a serious defense if you beat them up and hurt them. It's actually a hate crime, but, you know, yes. they, they're they not always going to – it depends on where you do it, what spot. Some spots don't give a fuck. They'll let you murder these motherfuckers, but some spots will fry your ass for doing it. Right. You and know? that was it, what he – that's what he said. He's like, every time you've done it, he said, if I wanted to move to a different prison, I would just find one and beat the shit out of them because well, I knew they were going to move me. I'll tell you one a good story. It was uh, – I was in Green 2009 – and uh, one pulled up, and the cop told us, I'm going to take a shit, a long one. He goes, he told us exactly what he's in here for, kitty uh, rape, all that stuff. He goes, I want him out of here. We said, all right. As soon as you walk out the bathroom, he's going to look like he got hit with a fucking, <laughs> he's going to be laid out. As soon as the cop came out the bathroom five minutes later, bro, we beat him senseless. 
We almost put him in. I thought we almost killed him. Put him in a coma, kicked him in the back of his head, knocked those teeth out, beat his face in. Six of us. Think about that. Pulverized him. We let him sit down, think he was good, watching X Men. That's how I met my race. He was watching X Men, sitting in one of those plastic chairs. I came and kicked him right in the back of his head. Boom. Put him down. Everybody just started beating him until he's almost dead. And then when the cop came out, they took they literally took him out on a stretcher. And this was how long were you incarcerated when this happened? I was incarcerated like three years already. Okay. And you did how many years total? Thirteen. Thirteen. So, th- yeah, because we talked about that. You done up to ten, I think, right before you started co- uh, cooperating. Yeah. How is it going in prison as a mob guy? Because that's something we can touch on too, compared to like Goodfellas and Goodfellas. They showed it like they had well, to the place. Everything was open. I know you're going to jail in a different time. So and that's not only that, it's in the state. There's not many mob guys in the feds. Yeah, it's like your home. You're with thousands of them. In the state, there's like none really. I was with only a couple. Everyone else knew, you know, I was affiliated and stuff like that. But for the most part, they were all derelict. You know, derelicts. They weren't really like how I was. You know, they, not that they were derelicts. They weren't. They were just like petty criminals or a lot of tiny guys that were crackheads. You really only. I really only ran into a few uh, guys that were affiffiliated or really connected. You know what I mean? That was really it. I didn't meet many mob guys in the state. So who do, you, who do you click with in there? Who do you hang with up there? No, you find Italians and, you know, Irish and, you know, right. all kinds of different people, but they're not like how I was. They were, they were criminals, but not, you know, affiliated, you know? So if you had your choice to do state time over or fed time over state any day of the week. No, but here's the thing. Feds is fucked up. So I'd rather do state. Feds is really fucked up, man. They'll put you in the box for years, man. That fed shit is so fucked up. The way they got it operated, the, everything's just so bad in there right now. Literally, the feds is such hard time. Such hard time. It's swift completely. The state is way easier time. The Fed is actually more violent than the state now. Really? Because it used to be mm-hmm. flip flop back in the day, right? Yep. Everything. The Feds take everything now. They take everything. They they take anything. Any petty guy off the corner. They're taking Rikers Island. The guys that should be in Rikers Island, they go into the Feds now. So they're making the Feds into a fucking shit show. And were you in? You were in Rikers for a little bit. I did forty months in Rikers Island total. What was the worst thing you seen while you were in Rikers? Oh, a guy get killed, a guy get stabbed in their fucking neck, guys get their face cut off, basically, with fucking uh, 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 surgical scalpels. They all got surgical scalpels in there. How do they yeah. get them in? People just smuggle them in? The cops. The cops bring yeah. everything in there. Hell yeah. We have bad surgical scalpels, the 11. They go through metal detectors. They don't even ring. They don't ring. What's the percentage of the guards that you think are dirty in there? 80. 80. Or the rest of them are scared. They don't want to be involved. Like, we had one in our tier. We were in a maximum security house. This guy was a rookie. Literally, when we were going to beat one of these guys up, we said, listen, buddy, because we don't want to ball at them. He's a little scrawny little guy. We said, yo, do me a favor. Get the fuck off the tier. <laughs> literally, he left the tier. Like, that's, like, literally, like, that's how scared he was. He was new. We told him, like, yo, just get off the tier, bro. Because these guys in the house I was in on my last bid were all facing life. Right. Everybody was, I was in a max tier. Wild Tia, I was I was facing a shit little time, and so was everybody else around me. So everything was a serious offense. When something happened, it wasn't a fight. It was always something serious. You know what I mean? It was gonna go down. The cops don't want to get hurt. They'll tell the guy the guy who runs. Um, so yeah, so so basically that you know we'll basically tell them like get off the fucking Tia. Some cops will they'll hit the pin obviously, but we'll lock them out the thing. We'll put them in the gate. Get the fuck out. You know. So 80% of cops are dirty. You'd say probably 15 to, 15 to 18 just don't want to have anything to do with it. We'd rather turn a blind eye. And maybe 2 Seriously, to 5% scared. are you legit. Just you know the average CEO in Rikers Island don't last two years? Really? He quits. They can't handle it. It's dang- Bro, it's really like not exaggerated. It's just so dangerous. Like You don't understand. Like, oh, it's, no, beyond- can- it's not even worth it. It's not worth it. Where you- They're cutting cops as well. Don't get it twisted. The cops are getting attacked too. So the cops are like, you know... You get into the wrong house, they'll be, they'll get the cop. They'll tell the cop get the fuck out. You know, they'll do something. And it's just not even they're always constantly breaking fights up and something going down and riots. It's just like not worth the money. Some guys make it, a lot of them don't. I know at least 30 cops when I was there on my 19 months when I was face, face, facing all my time. Quit. 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 Went to do something else. Couldn't do it. Couldn't handle it. Tell me you talk to them because you're on the same tier, only 21 guys on a tier. In yeah. that, in the house I was in, you get cool with them, and they're like, "Yeah, I can't do this no more, man. It's too crazy. You know, I can't handle it no more." That's crazy. What were they paying those guys? You know what their salaries were? Decent money, but it's just the fact that it's not worth it. Go, you want to yeah. go home on a fucking gas? Yeah, yeah. It was getting wild. They were beating, but they beat. They were beating. 
cops up in there as well. Cops are getting fucked up in there, stabbed, all kind of shit. It's just not worth it. It's too much chaos. It was way out of control, bro. And that's another thing that I think is hard to convey. Like my mafia movies, I think to some extent are really hard to convey exactly what it's like. Prison movie or prison shows are are the same. I think probably I would say the and I've never been to prison, uh, but I think probably one that I would say was a more accurate depiction was Oz, the TV show. Do you ever watch Oz? Absolutely, yeah. What What would you say that ranks as far as like how it really could be in there? No, it was good. That's like penitentiary shit. Yeah. So yeah. like penitentiary, yeah, that's valid. Penitentiaries is the worst thing you could be in, in the world. The politics are insane. People are getting stabbed and killed in there all the time. That's like regular people. I, I think I think how many people I think they were saying it in, in the feds. I think like dozens and dozens of people being killed a year now in the feds and penitentiaries. It's just basically they're playing with your lives. You know, you got guys in there. You got all kinds of people all over the country, all gang leaders, gangs. It's just so bad now. The feds in the penitentiaries, people are getting killed or beaten to death. It's just brutal in there right now. Yeah, that that was a good. I don't think they could make that show today. No. And like I said, that was good. Like I said, that's penitentiary maximum security life. That's not medium life or low. You know, that's that's never going home life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I talked to um, there was a guy that was in the show. Matter of fact, if you watch The Wire, he played Bodie in The Wire, the short guy, J.D. Williams. And he was was also in Oz. And he said that, like, the way they used to keep people from, like, laying out or being late, like the guy that wrote it, um, Tom Fontana. (laughs) He would say, like, if you were late to, like, a recording or a meeting or a screenwriter, whatever, that he would write you in to get gang raped. Like, he, oh, would, shit. <laughs> he would write you in to get raped if you were late to meeting. So that's how they would kind of keep a uh, whole court there. Everybody, there was never very many people that were late for whatever reason. But he said the yeah. same thing. You couldn't make that show nowadays with the way people are. Um, right. Wouldn't happen. But it was great. It was one of the first shows that HBO had that was, like, episodic television. It was for Sopranos. It was before all yeah. that. And, Very good job. and all of those guys that went on to do it's funny because you you remember them like i remember them from those people but now like a lot of them are insurance commercials the ball guy that was the arian is like oh. farmers um what do you fun- mean they're super famous a lot of them well the one super famous yeah uh dean winters is the yeah. uh mayhem guy you would have a super famous yeah yeah, a lot of a lot of them went on to have really great careers. The one yeah. guy, um, Chris Maloney, he's in the what the Law and Orders. I mean, yeah. that show launched a bunch of careers. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, what do you think about like? I guess nowadays, are you more scared to like? Are you kind of dead set on you don't want to go back? I don't want to say scared, but are you more set on you never want to go back to prison? Yeah, at this age, you don't want to go back, man. You know, if it happens, it happens. I would hate it, but like, you know, I'm thir- I'll be forty years old in June. I don't want to do no jail time anymore. You know, I did a lot. Right. So to- total out of everything together, how many years did you do? Your most recent ones, everything added up. Thirteen. Thirteen, 13 years. Yeah, that's that's a long time, man. And you you think now, like, and then wait. I was owned by the system for 21 years, though, because I've been on parole, probation, and jail since I'm 18. I got done at 39. Wow. It's the first Sorry. time I've ever been off probation in my life. How do September. you stay out of jail? Now, it's easy. You know, I'm just not on that time no more, you know? Right. No, I'm asking futuristically. How does Gene Barello stay out of jail? I, I, can, I mean, it, it's the only way I can go back to jail is if I get into, like, a fight or something like that. You know, I'm not committing... Like I said, is what I'm known for, things like that. I just maybe get into a road rage. You know, something like that can happen to anybody, you know. Who knows? But I, I'll never actually commit a crime where I'm, like, sitting on someone, doing something, you know, crazy like that, you know. But the thing is, if if I was you, what I would be more apprehensive about, and I've heard guys, you know Anthony Aralata, right? Very good. I was in jail with him. Okay. So I talked with him when I went to Connecticut, and we met, and we had dinner, and he he told me, he's like, you know, I don't want you to be offended, but like probably like eight o'clock, I'm going to go. I, I don't stay out late. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And he's just like, he said, it's nothing, you know, against you. He's like, he's like, I don't fear anybody. He said, but I don't trust myself either. So no, if that, that, say that, something or yeah. do the wrong thing. Right. You can't lose your balls. I didn't lose mine either. I don't let no one punk me. That's the problem. But you know, I think they know right. the deal. They know who to do it to and not to do it to. You know what I mean? I didn't, and with I'm you. I'm not just saying that to sound tough. They know I was a wild maniac. They're not going to just approach me, anybody, and say what they want. They know I'm not going to be okay with that. You know, I try to be nice, but they know the deal. They can talk all the shit they want. They know me. 
Right. Cause you're very public about where you are. I mean, if anybody follows you on social well, media, Instagram, yeah. Yeah. What, what do you say to the people that do call you things like, you know, you were referred as a woman beater quite a lot in the comments. What do you say to people <laughs> that say that? Go talk to my ex-girlfriend. She'll tell you the truth. I got it in text message as well. Yeah. I never touched that girl. So, and, and that's the thing that like when people have dis and I heard you, I think you said this on Matt Cox show, were you attracted to just dysfunctional relationships? No, I wasn't, but it just so happened that a lot of these girls, these hot girls are fucking nuts. And it just happened like well, that's, that. I that's what of, I mean. That's what it, that's is, what it means. It's, if, if, if I had a superpower, it would be getting hot women. That's my superpower, right? I get fucking beautiful women and that's, that's a problem. You know, it always happens that the, the super hot ones come with a little bit of emotional issues. Yeah. Um, you said you were waiting on something to kick off with the TV show and something like that. Where is the status of that? And can you tell us you know, where we're at? I, I can't say too much because they told me not to say as much as I, I, I was, but basically we, we will be filming soon. It's going to start. It's right. It's, it's, it's getting done. I just can't say the network we're doing it for, but, um, but it's coming. It's coming. It's like not smoke. It's like there, like everything's there. So now are you going to be like just a hands on with this? Are you going to be in front of the camera, more of an advisor no, role? Where are you I'm, gonna not, be? I'm not in the, I made, I'm making it clear. I'm not going to be in the show at all. Maybe play somebody later on, maybe somebody else that I could possibly uh, resemble that I, I, I looked up to when I was younger. But other than that, I probably won't be in it. Um, it's going to be, it's a lot of money being put into it. That's all I can say. It's mm -hmm. not going to look like Gravesend. Like I said, it's going to be like, looks like it's going to look like the Sopranos. Like the quality, the work, you know, the, the, what it looks like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, the key, the key to Sopranos and which is still good today is the writing because right. like out, outside of the technology that they use, like flip phones and, and the you know, big ass computers, you could air Sopranos today. And it was look like it was shot today. All the storylines right. are good. They're they're Everything is seen perfect. It's actually a very funny show. Like, right. if you watch it, there's so much comedy mixed in with that show that I don't think you get it on the first go round. Like, cause I'll probably watch that show, rewatch it like once a year. My wife watches it now because she's a counselor and she never used to watch it, but now she's got real interested in the, the Melfi Tony scenes. Then she started watching the rest of it and now she loves it. We go to sleep to it every night. Cause right. it's, that's a, cool. there's a lot <laughs> of shit in there. That's really comical. If you look just like Silvio and the way he is and the way Paulie is, it's really comical. Yeah. And, and she asked me, she was like, do you think he purposely meant to do that? And I don't, I was like, I don't know. I'm sure there were guys in that life that were comical like that. Did you know anybody that were actually like, even though you're serious guys, did you Fuck know anybody yeah. was a ball breaker like that? Vin Vinny was funny like that. Hysterical. Really? Yeah. Vinny was hysterical. Yeah. And see, that's hard when you see the pictures of him. You just think of like this serious old man. There's no shit taking old man. Privately, he's hysterical. He's fucking funny. And so I said, I used to take, you know, you know what he used to say? <laughs> <laughs> about somebody i'm not gonna say who it is but he used to go i'll suck a dick if that guy isn't a rat <laughs> <laughs> it was funny oh the things that used to come out of his mouth it was crazy it was, it, he used to say the most craziest things but i used to die laughing oh it was great now the last show we talked about you said you had one of the guy was it peter Gotti's son peter's son yeah it was my, butt, my little man yeah john you said the Gambinos at that point in time had pretty much washed their hands of that. Oh, absolutely. With them guys, yeah, they wanted nothing. My, my crew wanted nothing to do with them. I had to beg Ronnie to let me give him a chance. They didn't want nothing to do with that name. They hated them guys. And I hated them. They just looked at them like jerk offs, you know? Why Why the hate, though? Was it, I mean, because was so, it just well, the remember, attention that John got? Remember, John Jr. was a dick when he was the boss to everybody. You know, when he right. was around, he abused everybody in that neighborhood. And now you're not the guy no more. Now you're on TV and talking and people are like, oh, this fucking jerk off used to abuse me. And this one. So everybody had a thing with him. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't a nice guy when he was the guy. You know what I mean? So the hate was more towards Jr., not senior. Absolutely. More towards Jr. What was the feeling in the streets to Senior? Oh, legend. Everybody loved him, no matter what. They, people could say he ruined the mafia. They're like, bro, nah. Dudes look, dudes idolize that guy. What do you think set him apart over anybody else? Because you've talked about the fact that New York has so many guys. There's so many personalities. Okay. What set him apart? He didn't care. He knew his destiny, and he loved it. Okay? He knew his destiny, and he, he loved it. That's the difference between him and everybody else. The other bosses didn't want to go to prison. He knew where he was going to end up. He didn't give a fuck. 
He knew it. He knew he had them watching him from satellites. He knew that he was the most wanted guy in the country. He knew where he was going. He knew the plan. He didn't care. He wanted his name on a fucking, he wanted his face on a poster, on a t-shirt. <laughs> that's where his goal was. And that's how he went. That's the difference. That's what, like, that's why he's such a polarizing guy. And another movie that, you know, we can mention is the Gotti, at least from 96, where Amada Santi played him, which I think is a very good movie. Um, <laughs> a lot of good actors in there. William Forsyth that played Sammy, I thought done excellent. A lot of good, good acting in there. Right. Um, it just, Gotti was just on another stratosphere. Like that name in itself, it's one of those names like Capone or Luciano. Like people that right. don't know anything about the mob have heard those names. Right. And you know, like I, but like I said, with Gotti, you have to understand Sean, he literally broke all the rules and look what he did. He knew what he's doing was a death sentence for him and everybody. He thought that was going to save him. Actually, they're all families are supposed to kill him. And they did try him many times. He knew what he was doing. He didn't care. He was on a mission. X, Y, and Z, this is what we're doing. Boom, he did it. He knew he was going to end up dying in prison. Boom, he did it. He didn't give a fuck. And that's the only thing. You can't say he ruined the mafia because at the end of the day, and I'm a cooperator, the cooperators ruined the mafia. That's right. who ruins the mafia. So we can't sit here and lie and say, oh, God, he ruined the mafia. No, the cooperators ruined the mafia. At the end of the day, it's the guys that are facing life that don't want to do the life sentence. That's who ruins the mafia because without the cooperators, the feds have no case. You understand right. that? Yeah. So we can't say that Gotti ruined the mafia. It's the cooperators that ruined the mafia. Because at the end of the day, I'm supposed to be doing life, but I'm not. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, and that's, separate, right. and that's, what separ that's what separates me from a lot of these other guys that make excuses. Ah, this is what I have no excuse. I was mad. I felt like I got betrayed in scumbag, but at the end of the day, I still could have took my 30, 35 years, whatever I was getting, and says, ah, oh, fuck you, and went out like that. I was pissed off. I might have jumped the gun. I I do regret it because I feel like I, I feel like that was my destiny to be a, a street legend. And I, I ended up ruining that. But I do like the life I'm living now, but don't get me wrong, I feel like my destiny was to be a gangster. And that's just what I was. You know, I was a bad dude in the street. I felt like, you know, that's what I was supposed to be. But like I said, Gotti and them didn't ruin the mafia. The cooperators ruined the mafia. Was there ever any talks about you getting made before everything went Fuck south? Yeah. If anyone wants to tell the truth, I mean, of course, the FBI could play wiretaps and it's talked about on wiretaps. I mean, literally, like, you know, I know the truth. The people that everyone around me knew the truth. And I had 20 kids waiting for me to get strained out to come under me. Ronnie used to talk about it with me all the time. We knew what was going on. It's just, you know, timing and I went to jail and shit happened. You know, it is what it is. I was still very feared and respected, you know, so. Have you had any conversations with Ronnie since he's been in jail? No. No, with his son. With his son. So yeah. is he, does he, he has a release date, doesn't he? Yeah. When is it? I didn't hear, I, I, yeah, yeah. You see, what, what a lot of people don't realize is that they made me the poster boy of that case, but I'm not the one that really brought everybody down. You know, I was the last guy. You know that, right? I was yeah. the last guy in that case. Guys were wearing wires. Guys were the ones putting us all indicted. I was the last guy 19 months in it that, that just said, all right, whatever, you know, but I, I gave in, but. There was a lot of people ahead of me. You know what I mean? So Ronnie, Ronnie has his childhood best friend who wore a wire on him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And even though he was a tough guy, that's what he did. You know what I mean? I was sitting in jail when this was going on. You know what he's mean? still then, inside right now, right? Who, Ronnie? Ronnie, yeah. Yeah, he's got, they gave him for 14 years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But he's got a release date. It's not too far away, is it? Four more years. Four more years. Say, hypothetically, he gets out. Do yeah. you ever talk do you does he ever talk to you? Do y'all have a conversation? No, I like I said Ronnie Ronnie's a ballsy guy. If Ronnie seen me in the street, we never get into it. He he's yeah. more mad because like, you know, I was his right hand man, protege, whatever the case may be, but he knows how I am. Like at the end of the day, I did what I did, but he knows if we seen each other privately, he knows that we would get into it and I wouldn't say shit. We would just get into like a a brawl. And well, he's I mean, a hands-on dude. Yeah, I got well, you gotta understand his position. If he gets out after fourteen years, he I can see where he'd be a little upset. <laughs> oh, fuck that. Look at all the money he had to pay back. Yeah. Millions. Now, you mentioned a minute ago that Gotti had been tried to had tried to have been assassinated by some of the other families. The biggest one that's kind of known to the public and they play that part in the movies where the car bomb blew up and it killed what was it, DeChico? Frankie DeChico? Yeah. And they killed people around him to send the messages. They were killing people, they killed Eddie Lino, they killed a bunch of guys around him. 
Okay. So, so talk about that. What, what do you know about that as far as the guys around him that were killed? And what Bobby was he Bobby Borrello. Bobby Borrello was killed. Eddie Lino was killed. Frankie DiPico was killed. That was meant for him and Gotti. Um, you know, everyone that was in on the plot or was actual a shooter, they were trying to eliminate them. Remember, they claimed Bobby Borrello was a shooter on that. Right. Um, they, cl- they claimed John Canigula, he was in jail for heroin, so they couldn't get him. You know, they all went to jail. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the guys that were involved in that hit, they were trying to take out. Okay. So what do you, th- did you hear the thing where Sammy's daughter said that the Gambinos tried to give. See, I don't know if that's true. I can never, you know. Cyanide or something like yeah, that. I, I, I don't know. I can't see them going to a girl and doing that, but you never know. I don't even know. You know what I mean? So who knows, you know? If Gotti hadn't, if that issue hadn't went down the way it did and Sammy hadn't cooperated, you think the end result would have been the same in some way or form that would eventually got him for something? Yeah, no, he was going to jail without Sammy regardless. He was yeah. on wiretaps uh, confessing, to, talking about 19 murders. Yeah, right. no, there's no way around that. The feds can convict you of hearsay, but they always need the cooperator without the... See, feds can indict you without wiretaps just to cooperate. It. That's, that's right. all they need. But when you have wiretaps and you have cooperators, you're done. You have a better chance of seeing Jesus fucking doing backflips in your backyard, you know what I'm saying, and winning the case. Literally, the odds of you beating the feds with wiretaps and cooperators is like literally walking into a store, buying a dial ticket, and winning $900 billion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't happen. It happened like a couple of times. My boss did it, Vinny. We still don't know how he did it. It was the craziest thing ever. He admitted to killing people on wiretaps. They found the body. He still beat everything. No one can understand how he did it. It don't happen. It's like the rarest thing. So he was going to jail regardless, but... um. There was a lot of other cooperators besides Sammy in that case anyway. It wasn't just Sammy. Yeah. And I think one of the things that made Gotti so polarizing was, again, like the way he dressed and the fashion. He put a lot of – I think they said he would get a haircut like every other day. And then obviously his suit – yeah, his suits were were very flashy. Who was like – what was the fashion like when you were coming up? What were the guys dressing in? Was it still suits or did it switch over to track suits? Track suits. There are a lot of track suits, a lot of like modern day stuff. Honestly, they switched the style up. They got switched. Anichi wall suits, Sean John Velour suits, all that stuff. Everybody's wearing that stuff now. Cardi has yeah. sunglasses. Well, you know, all, all that shit. Because that, that's always been an interesting like timepiece, especially if you watch like The Godfather, everybody was wearing suits. You yeah. know, good fellas, it was kind of switched between suits and, you know, dressier shirts. Then The Sopranos came out and it kind of follows right. the timeline of the fashion and everybody were wearing the track suits. What was some of the track suits you had back in the day? All of them. Sergio Bikini, Fila, um, Anichi, um, Sean John, all kinds of shit, bro. That's what we wore. Now, do, do, I mean, I've heard you say some things about Grey's End. Do you know Willie DeMayo? Or have you, do you guys not get along? Or Yeah, no, I don't. I I've, I know who he is, but no, I don't. I don't. Uh, I know so that's just your opinion of the show. It's got nothing to do with him. It, it's, it's terrible. What about the, um? you know, he's got a clothes, that Brooklyn brand. Have you ever seen those? No. Yeah, he's got a clothing line too. That's um, I've seen some of the the track suits that he had. Listen, everybody, everybody's running with this genre right now. It's it's very hot. So you know, I like I said, I have a huge, huge fan base off this stuff. You know, something that you would never think you could have off you know something like this, but I do. And uh, like I said, everybody's running with that genre right now. So it's hot right now. Yeah, and I think it'll always be hot. You know, because it's. It's, you're going to have a resurgence of people that get interested in this type of thing, that see Goodfellas for the first time, that see you know these documentaries on TV for the first time, that see Vlad interviews and see guys like yourself and John, and you know they go and they start researching, and that's what these platforms are, these podcasts are, is to give them the ability to hear the stories they wouldn't hear. And the beauty part is you're doing this podcast with me, and we've covered a lot of stuff. We're closing in on an hour. We're about to wrap it up. But you can go on another podcast tomorrow – and tell another hour's worth of shit and not repeat anything that you've told me. And I was in the, that- I was in the, I was in the street 24/7 for many years. I have so much stuff, and so much knowledge. Uh, and you know, my prosecutor in the college Terry, who's attorney general of the Eastern District, told me at my sentencing, "Gene, you should go and become a mob commentator, become uh, a mob thing, genre like this, because she says you know so much about your time." You know what I mean? I, I've often thought, and that's why I thought Francis was brilliant in the way he did that for content was he would break down certain scenes from movies like, you know, Bronx Tale or, you know, The Godfather or whatever, and explain why that would or wouldn't happen because that's important. Like a lot of times I think people just see these things at face value and they take it. And Hollywood changes so much shit. The shows that I used to do with Anthony 
Uh, matter of, until you guys done the one with Sammy, Anthony's highest rated video was the one we did on Tommy D. Simone. Me and yeah. him together in the studio yeah. in New York. And it yeah. broke down the difference between how Tommy was in real life as opposed to how he was portrayed. Yeah, right. Exactly. And yeah. that's what people, you know, I think well, they hear because when they even like the Godfather of Harlem, the timelines and that thing, the way they have these people talking to people, it's all fucked up. But people so watching perfect. it don't know the difference. They don't know the difference. Like they got not. Frank Costello sitting there talking with Chin when the Chin tried to fucking shoot him. Like, I yeah. mean, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I mean, great acting. And I think that's what kind of overpowers people. They'd rather just yeah. do the entertainment portion of it than the truth. But yeah, I don't know. Well, listen, man, I'm glad you could come back on. Is there, give us a story that you haven't told us yet. I don't care who it is. Just give us an interesting story to close it out. Um, hmm. Uh, I mean, like a like a war story, like something we yeah, like done yeah, war story. It can be with you, with with somebody else, John, whatever you got. So, um, I remember one time. Uh, this is this is actually a funny one. I remember I um, this guy had owed me money. I'm not going to say his name, and uh, he owned a, a, a store. Um, it's it, I'm not going to say the name of the business, whatever. I like the guy now, and um, he kept fucking everybody over on money, and he didn't know me. He wasn't from the neighborhood. He's from a different area. Moved over there. And he had a problem with paying, and he's always messing around. And everyone told him, don't deal with Gene, because I'm telling you, if you do that with him, he's going to do something to you. You know what I mean? Like, he's not like the other ones. They don't, they, he don't, he, you know, I don't get beat on a dollar, especially if it's my people's money. So he started dealing with me, and I didn't know he was bad. So I had a book, book with him and loan money with him. And I remember he, like, lost, like, $25,000. And he had to give, like, twelve grand and he's on a half sheet. And he like ducked me like completely like for three days. I'm furious. And um, sure enough, um, you know this is a bad one. Uh, he owned a business with people working in a business, and I walked into his business. I went in the back where he was. I beat him. I took the chopping knife. I chased him around his whole thing, around his store. His mother was in the store, just being there with him. The mother screaming, crying, breaking us up. I'm trying to chop him with the knife, and. Uh, all the customers and people are under the tables. The workers are under the tables. And um, yeah, yeah, this is in Howard Beach. Yeah, real story. And people know about the story in the neighborhood. And um, long story short is uh, people warned him that I was that kind of guy. And long story short, um, I actually cut him with the thing. And um, what ended up happening is his grandpa paid the debt because they were so scared. And that was one of my things where, you know, one of my crazy stories, I... They told him, don't deal with this kid if you can't pay him because this kid's going to do something to you. Jerked me around. Weekend came. I went right into the fucking store, broad daylight in front of everybody, right in the back. He's, he probably didn't think that was going to happen. He was like as white as your wall, you know, <clears throat> like all the life out of him. And it was just a really, really bad situation in that store. So I can say. And his mom just happened to be in there for being with, you know, in the store. And I guess that's what saved him because she was screaming, crying in the middle of us, you know? Yeah. What? Was that your biggest money maker? Was that gambling? What was your biggest money maker when you were in the streets? Yeah, loan shark and sports fan. Because I heard you you were talking about the baseball lines the other day on your Instagram. Just Fuck how him. and for these things is crazy. I, I don't follow baseball well enough to bet on it. Football would be my main Bro. sport. But these baseball lines are nuts. What do you mean? Baseball looks like football scores. It's the same it thing. It does. It does. Some of them do. Seven, 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 seven. Twenty. What the fuck you mean? It's football yeah. scores. Yeah, base is the baseball games look like really defensive football games. Bro, I never seen seven. I've never seen baseball scores this high every day. 13 to 7, 20 to 7. You don't get that in baseball in the 90s. You get at most 10 runs, eight runs for a crazy day. Games used to be six, one, two, three. Now you cannot bet an under and over. You just don't know. It's just the under, the over, listen, the over could be 14. You'd be like, oh, that's a lot. Yeah, they're scoring 30 total, bro. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. You know, it's crazy. Yeah. It really is. And they had UFC 300 last night. I forgot I was looking at a stat of how much money was bet on there, but it was a lot of money right. on last night. I don't know if you watched it or not, but it was some it was some good fights on there last night. Yeah, I can um, imagine. I forgot the the BMF belt was probably the best fight. Uh, Holloway slept Gaethje with like a second to go. Like he broke his nose in the first round, so it was hard for Gaethje to to fight it. But they finished out. It was round five. Yeah, it was like ten seconds to go. And Holloway's like pointing at the ground with his fist, like, let's just yeah. go. Let's just brawl out. And they just start fucking haymaker. And, and then with one second left, he caught him with a right. And I mean, just fucking slept him. And yeah. the whole place crazy. went crazy. He got yeah. fight of the night, knockout of the night, bonus. I think he's like close to like three quarters of a million dollars because Dana White up the bonuses. Nice. 
All right, man. Well, look here. I'm glad you could come by. It's really good. Just uh, shooting the shit again. Like I said last time, hope everything goes good. Keep us updated on the show, man. Whenever you get anything moving on, if you need some press, uh, feel free to come back on. Yeah. We'll shout it out. Um, you know, maybe, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe we'll get together at some point. I know you do a lot of traveling. I'm going back to New York next weekend. In fact, to do some recording down there. So maybe we'll get together at some point. Yes, definitely, brother. Good seeing you. All right, man. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Hollywood Wade. That was Gene Barello. And unfortunately, we are out of time. Tune in next week for an all-new episode of Crime and Entertainment. Gene, we appreciate it, my friend. Take care, bro. Right, one second. One second. Yeah. I just need to make